What is going on y'all? Check me out here and in today's video, we are gonna be jumping into what is on my Samsung Galaxy Fold 4. So we're gonna talk about the exterior and the interior, so to speak, of the phone. So from my apps to my wallpaper, to my lock screen, to the certain settings that I may have done, we're gonna be discussing all of that. So let's get right on into it. Now, everything that I'm mentioning in the video is gonna be linked down below in the description box as well so that you can check some of these things out. But here we go. So first thing first, everyone, on the outside of the phone, I have the Samsung case. And this is the one with the grip for your hand like that. Not this, it's the grip, yeah, the grip, the handle, the strap, there you go, for your hand. And this is very advantageous, especially with the phone this size. So when I'm using it like this, this helps with the weight of the phone in one hand. And I know I have a review coming, but I will say I already noticed a difference in just holding the phone like this. The screen is wider and it feels wider. It makes using the phone in this manner a lot more pleasant, a lot better. I also like with the case though that I can open up the phone and have good hand support there as well without having to grip the phone. So, so far this has been my case of choice, but I'm starting to eye the one that has the stand built in because I would love to be able to like prop my phone up you know, properly with that versus leaning on something. So, but ultimately I'm either rocking it like this or without a case. In most cases, play on words. <laughs> in most of the time, I like to rock it without a case, uh, just simply because it feels better in hand. So in taking a look at my cover screen here, I do have it with the always on display. This is my lock screen. I love this, it looks good. It's so nostalgic for me to see this setup from Mario and it's animated. And I got this from the Samsung Galaxy theme store, very nice. In terms of my quick launch icons, I have my phone in the bottom left and YouTube in the bottom right so that I can just quickly swipe into that. Okay, now that I've unlocked my phone, we are looking at my cover screen setup and I have a widget up here, which I honestly don't remember the name of. I just love customizing my phone. I am using the default launcher. I didn't install a third party one. Although I usually install Nova launcher if I'm gonna use one, I'm just using the default this time. I just kind of want to get a feel for the stock experience before I jump into using a launcher and changing it up. Yeah, so I have that widget up top. I have the Google search widget beneath that. And then I have a folder here on the bottom left, messages, Chrome, and my camera. And then this gorgeous wallpaper here, like it just looks good. I also have it so that if I swipe in from the right, I can pull up my edge panel. So yeah, that's my cover screen setup. But then when you open up the phone, this is what we're greeted with. And again, let me just take you back a step. This is how it looks on the bigger display or the inside display for the lock screen thing I had. And the animation doesn't lose any quality even though it's stretched out on a larger screen. Basically what I have here on my home screen setup is a very clean, minimal look. I removed all the apps from my dock down here and I actually just moved them over to the second page. So the first page is just focused on like widgets and quick information. I also have it set for swipe gestures to get like the um, multitask switcher and stuff like that. So I just wanted to keep it real clean, real classy. And I think this look is that. It actually took me a couple of hours. And then beneath that, I have quick access to my music player. So I can instantly just tap the play uh, icon here. You need and it'll instantly start playing my song. But for copyright, we don't have the volume up on that, but you can see that it was playing. Then when I swipe to the right, I have it so that I can access the Google News Feed or, you know, just information in regards to different things that are going on in the world. So taking it back to my home screen here, if I swipe to the left, this is where I have access to my apps that I probably would have ordinarily had in my dock down here. So my commonly used applications. Now, like I said, this is just one widget at the top. On the left, it lets me tap on it to quickly get to the Google search option. Or on the right hand side, it doesn't do anything because it's just giving me the date and the time. Then beneath that, I have my calendar with my agenda to the right of that. So I'll get a two for one in there. This is actually, I think the Samsung smart widget. So it's not just this one widget. I can actually swipe to the right and access the weather swipe to the right once more and access my reminders so I can see all the different things that I need to do. And I love the fact that I can quickly get to this by just swiping. I still don't have to open an app or commit to one of these being up here all the time. I can basically use the one that 
best fits my need in that moment. So like if I'm out, I'm probably gonna have it on reminders. But scenarios when I'm home or traveling, my calendar. So I love this and on this screen is even better. One thing though I don't like y'all is you have an option when you long press on the screen here. You can go to settings and you can go to cover screen mirroring and turn this on. And when I hear cover screen mirroring, I think that it's going to make an exact replica of my cover screen, meaning this outer one here, on my inner screens. But what it does instead is it focuses on maintaining the layout and the size of your cover screen versus just focusing on maintaining the layout. So basically, what that means is on my cover screen, if I had two pages of information, what happens when I go to my inner screens with that option on is that it takes the first page and puts it on the left and the second page and puts it on the right hand side of the display. That baffles me, but uh, nonetheless, that is just a small but kind of big gripe for me because I would love for this to be uniformed, but there isn't a way that looks aesthetically pleasing for me to do that, so we're here. But taking it back to my second page, the apps that I have down here that I use the most would be Spotify for my music. Um, Millinote is what I use for my note taking. It's also how I collaborate with my team and everything so that we are on one accord for what we have to do and where we are at with current projects and things like that. So. That is my go-to note-taking app. Now taking it on to my next app, we have Instagram. So if you aren't following me up there, you might wanna go ahead and make sure that you do so that you can be notified when I drop another video or just to get a little sneak peek at what I'm up to. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's Instagram there. Check me out, T-E-C-H-M-E-0-U-T. Then next to that I have Apple Music, which should be over here next to Spotify. Oh, I did lock my home screen. That's another setting that I did so that I don't accidentally move apps. I locked it so that I cannot move them. <laughs> but next to Apple Music, I have QuickBooks. That's where I do all my bookkeeping and invoicing. I love that app, especially for all of my entrepreneurs out there. If you are not using that, I highly suggest you look into it. If you know me, you know I'm really big on Amazon. I shop up there quite a bit. That of course has to be on the home screen so that it is readily available for me to shop. Then I have my phone messages, Chrome. The bottom row is honestly self-explanatory because it's a bunch of stock apps. But if I swipe in from the right and pull into my edge drawer, I have my apps that I want you know to access very commonly regardless of what application I'm in, which is Telegram. All right, real quick. And then speaking of Telegram, just a heads up, there's a lot of scams going on down in the comments section. A way to make sure that it's me actually responding to you is that there will be a verified check beside my name. And also if I were announcing a giveaway winner, it would not be on Telegram or WhatsApp or anything like that. So please be mindful of that, especially if someone's letting you know that you want something. Which is what I use for communication, for business, um, YouTube, Chrome, and settings, and Millinote. And then at the top are my most recently opened applications. But I also have it set so that if I swipe to the left here, I can get to the smart select tool. And if I swipe once more, I can get to my weather. And whatever I leave it on is what comes back on when I do pull into the edge drawer. And that just looks so good to me, doesn't it look clean? You gotta admit, man, this might be a big phone, but God, if content does not look good up here. Moving on to the next thing, I also have a setting so that if I take my finger over here on the power button on the fingerprint reader and I swipe down, it'll pull up my notification panel. So moving to the third page, I actually just have this page for the video, which were some notes that I wanted to have so that I make sure I talk about everything, but this isn't something that I probably will keep. Okay, now one thing I forgot to mention is my wallpaper. I got that from an app called Wall Candy, but it, it has some really high quality wallpapers, but it also has the annoying ads. So you're gonna have to, you know, be a little patient with that. Here we go. Like that right there, Wall Candy. That wallpaper looks good. So I can choose this to download it in the bottom right, the heart to favorite it, which I'm gonna do, or I can choose this icon here on the far left to go ahead and set it as my home screen. And then just swipe in from the left there and I'll get back to all of the wallpapers in which it offers. Like, oh my gosh, y'all, I'm gonna get sidetracked. Hopping into my settings, the only thing that I really changed in there, um, 
I would say would be making this dark mode. I did turn on that. I also turned on motion and gestures so that I don't have the icons in the bottom. I also changed my layout. So my home screen settings, I changed it so that my home screen grid is six by five, my app screen grid is six by six, and folder grid four by four. That's just a little reference for you. That's my setup for the most part in terms of customization. If you're curious about my apps, I'm not gonna go through all of them, but I have no problem showing you my pages here. So I have three pages total, as I did put a lot of apps into folders just to kind of categorize it a little better. So this is my games folder. I don't play a ton of games on my phone, but when I do, it's a certain kind of game that I like. Like I love like Cooking Dash and things like that. So a little strategy. You know, then I have my Google folder. Of course, it's gonna have all the default Google applications. My launchers, which currently I don't have a lot up here, but that can and will be changing. So I had to create a folder for what's to come. And then I have my Microsoft folder, photography folder. So these are all the apps that I like to use to further enhance my pictures and videos. Canva is awesome, like chef's kiss type good for just predefined templates to create either IG stories or YouTube thumbnails, just so many things that you normally would have to create from scratch are pre-made in there and you just drag and drop what you want. I would definitely say all my creators out there, please check that app out if you have not. Once I finally got introduced to it, I was like, dang, this has been out here all this time and I didn't know. So take the gem I'm giving you and download the application. Next to that, I have CapCut, which is really good for giving you a lot of different effects for your photos. Photos. I have to the right of that InShot, which is what I like to use to edit my videos up here. Lightroom again for editing photos, as well as Polar and Snapseed. Hopping out of there, Samsung folder, self-explanatory. My shopping folder with all of the apps that I like to shop in. And then my wallpapers folder. This is, these are the applications that I like to use to get wallpapers. This is one of the folders that will be ever growing for me because I love checking out new wallpaper applications just to see if one suggests me something that I haven't seen before. But I would say my faves in this right now would be nothing but walls and wall candy. Those are the two that I would say to download first. Then next to that, I have my widgets. So I use KWGT Widget Pro and these are just all the different widget packs that I've downloaded to be used in it. I think if at most I might do a top apps video if that's something you wanna see, let me know down below in the comment section if you wanna see my top apps or my favorite apps that I'm currently using for the fold. But yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you all were able to download some apps from it. And of course, if you have any app recommendations for me, feel free to drop them down in the comment section because I am always on the hunt for some new ones. But until the next one, y'all, as always, thanks for taking the time out to let me tech you out.